Hi, my name's Steve Large. I just want to talk today about overthinking and the addiction of thought. Now, this is a hard one to combat. And because most people are addicted to thought, we don't recognize it as a problem. A lot of this for me is brought on by watching films and stuff like that, watching the telly, because you're going into your mind all the time and you're always in there, you're watching movies, things are get, taking you in, your, your thoughts, and a lot of stuff is, tr is designed to trigger your thoughts. So what happens is your thoughts are playing all the time. Now, this isn't what the mind's for. The mind is there to serve us. We're there to use the mind, so we need to get there. We've got an issue, we've got a problem. How am I going to go about that? I know I'm going to think about that and I'm going to work that out. Now, it's not there to be constantly going over everything, playing movies of the past, movies of the future. Movies of the past normally bring on depression. Movies of the future bring on anxiety, depending on how your mind is programmed and wired. So, this is why we don't live in our heads and our minds. This is why we need to get out of our minds and get into reality and start living our lives instead of living through perceived futures of happiness and, oh yeah, I really like being there. You know, I'm just gonna sit here and daydream and live in a far away place where it's all nice and rosy. No, we need to wake up and be here today and now because this is our life experience. We're not here to daydream. It's okay to daydream at times, but this isn't what we should be doing 24 seven. Thinking is absolutely addictive. I know for sure, I spend so many times a day just drifting off into my mind like I'm asleep. Now, this is not good. <laughs> it's, it's something that once you start doing it, it's hard to break. The problem with being in your mind is you start believing you are your mind. Now your mind always looks for what's best for you. It doesn't know empathy for other people. Its job is to protect you and look after you. So it's fight and flight and freeze. It's that scenario. It'll work out how best to work for you. Now, if you think you are your mind and your thoughts, so for example, you go out loving everyone, loving everything as we intended. You want to share, you want to be a part of everything. You want to be love. When you're in your mind, your mind is going, what best serves me in this situation? When I go in here, how can this situation serve me best? What's the best thing for me in this situation? How can I make my life easier? How can I make my life better? Now, this is okay as an overall thing of coming into your head to aspire to achieve stuff in your life. But if you're in here 24 seven, this makes you an egotistic or a narcissist. Not as, but your behavior will be as one. So, this is why we don't think all the time and we have to be careful of mind identification because it's addictive, because it'll start telling us. Um, it'll find patterns to keep us in our minds because it wants to be identified with, it's got power there. So it'll start giving you visions of, oh, you're gonna be happy in the future and it'll paint a little movie for you and you'll watch the movie and you'll be like, oh, I can't wait to get there. You're missing out on today. You're missing out on your children. You're missing out on your wife, your husband. You're missing out on everything right here, right now because you're living in your mind with a fairy tale that not necessarily is gonna happen. And then when people don't add up to what your mind's painted the picture of, you start resenting them. This is not the way to live. This is not the way to be happy. We have to snap out of it, stop overthinking, use our mind as and when we want it, and be in the present moment. We're here to live awake. This is part of waking up. It's, it's totally that. When you're in your mind all the time and be acting like an egotist or a narcissist because it's all about me, that's not you. That's your mind. That's your mind's job. That's what it does. So the more in your mind you are, the deeper of a selfish type of person you appear to others. The less you're in your mind and the more you come out, the less it's about you. The mind isn't evil or bad, but being addicted to it is a problem. And it's not just a perceived problem, 
It's a problem that's suffering throughout the world because when everyone is working out what's best for them, the world becomes very lonely and very cold and shallow because it's all quick fix. The mind likes to pick on things that are quick fix. So if I wanted to go out and have a beer now, I'd be like, my mind would go, oh yeah, go out, have a laugh, be fantastic, I'll have a drink. Yeah, I'm happy, look, I'm drunk. That's not happiness. Or, or let's go and buy that car, or let's go and offload on that person. Oh yeah, see them. I, I put them down, I told them, I tore them down a peg or two. God, I feel fantastic. Your mind's going, yeah, yeah, look at you. See the way they looked at you, yeah, yeah, yeah. See what they said, yeah, yeah. Wow, you told them, didn't you, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all in your head. It's not real. But this is what your mind does. Your mind bigs you up. Because the more it bigs you up, the more you listen to it. And the more you listen to it, the more it controls you. This is why a lot of people self-destruct and blow things up. And I know this resonates with a lot of people because it resonates with me. And it used to be who I was. Things are going well in your life. And you're actually starting to feel happiness. You're no longer just thinking about you and identifying with your mind. You're no longer being selfish. You're coming out of your thoughts. You're waking up. You're connecting with loved ones. You're, you're getting more into nature. Things finally are happening the way you want them to. And then boom, there'll be a trigger. Your mind will pick up on something and you'll say, Hey, that's not going quite right. Or I've noticed she's talking to that guy. Who's that guy on the phone? Or who's that lady? Who did he just smile at? Who did she just smile at? I'm going to lose this. And then your mind starts taking over you again. And you start listening to it. What, where's she going? I'll check her phone. I'll check his phone. Who's that he's talking to now? Yeah, there's something going on here. They're going to take away my happiness. And what happens then is you start going into your head. Because your mind wants to solve problems. That's what your mind does. It solves problems. And if there's no problems to solve... It's going to create them. This is what you need to know. It will find problems. And if there's none there to be found, it will look for them and it will create them and it'll put them in your head. And you'll start thinking about them, thinking it's you, thinking it. Oh, it's in my head. It must be me. She must be doing it because I'm thinking about it. Hey, yeah, she, she's on that phone quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, she is, isn't she? I bet she's talking to that guy. Yeah, yeah, that guy she was with the other day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, see the way she looked at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're having these conversations in your head. It's insanity. <laughs> it literally is insanity. I know, I've been there. You can't talk to yourself and you can't argue with yourself in your own head. You have to accept the thoughts come and go. And this is why you have to trust your intuition because your head is going to pull you back in. You have to have the faith. The faith more than the fear. You have to. Because if not, you're going to keep destroying stuff. You're going to keep looking in the wrong places for your happiness. You're going to be a consumer. You're going to be all these other character traits that go with mind identification. Waking up is snapping out of the trance. Snapping out of thought. No longer identifying with your thought processes and your mind. This is what waking up is. Because once you start waking up, you start knowing who you are. You're no longer what's in your head, which is fear and panic and problems. You're accepting nature. You realise the energy that you are. You start connecting. You see the beauty in just a simple bird or a simple flower. You see the reality this is enlightenment. And the more you, you come out of your thought, the more you wake up, the more you connect, the better you feel. And it's real happiness. Because you're grateful for every single thing. Your mind is no longer judging or labelling. When you're in your mind, you will not be happy. It's an addiction. You will only serve the addiction. You can please the mind by giving it what it wants. But once it's worn off, it will want more. And it will keep wanting more. Nothing will be good enough. The best way to start beating this is be grateful for what you have. Regardless of what it is, look for something to be grateful for. Even if that is the ability to breathe. Because... 
people need to appreciate the simple things. Open your eyes if you can see. That's a blessing that not everyone has. Listen to the sounds of nature. That's a blessing to be grateful for that not everyone has. A roof over your head, food in your belly. These are things to be grateful for. They're not entitlements in this world. We need to appreciate what we have. And the minute we start being grateful for what we have, we, don't st we, we stop judging. It's important if we're going to wake up everybody else that we wake up ourselves first. This isn't a one-man crusade. This is about all of us. And this is a message for all of us. I listen to my intuition now. If I listened to my mind, I would not be doing these videos. I'd be absolutely sick of hearing myself and sick of looking at myself in this camera. I'd be driving myself mad and I would judge myself and question myself and I just wouldn't bother. But I'm not listening to my mind. I'm listening to my intuition and I'm going to do it anyway. Regardless of what my mind says and the judgment of my mind and how it talks to me, I don't care. My mind can say what it wants and I accept it does its job and some days he's better than others but he's still there always chirping in my ear but I choose to quiet that and I do it through meditation and I do it through relaxation. I follow my intuition and I follow my guidance. That's my choice. I decide. We need to take control of what we do. It's our body. It's our life. We decide, not the mind, we decide what we do. We need to shine and we need to stand. Life is not easy. So what? Is that an excuse for giving up? No, it just makes it a challenge. Let's rise to the challenge. Let's do it, throw it at me, let's go, give me more, let's go again, let's keep going, let's keep going all the time, get up, walk forward, regardless of what is thrown at you, smile and take it again and again, and get up and go again and go again and shine, you will start making a difference. This doesn't mean, as I always state, that we stay in abusive, negative situations or relationships. It's not about that. We do what's best for us. Not in a mind-based, selfish way. We have to look after our body and our mind and our souls to be able to shine and help those who are ready. That's what we do. And we show them that we can get back up again. Regardless of how many times we've been put down, we will get back up again. And we start embracing the challenges and the growth that it brings. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll wish you all love and light. And I hope you all have a fantastic evening, day, morning, wherever you are. And just remember, you're strong. You are completely strong. You've got this.